then the last thing to talk about here is a potential deal to stall the fighting in the Israeli-Hamas war. Mm. So today we have Hamas gunmen battling Israeli forces, which have pushed deep into Gaza's largest refugee camp. Yeah. Um, so far, 11 people were killed by an Israeli airstrike, um, which was done on a house. Um, this is reported by medics on the scene. Um, and this is all happening while we are getting close to a possible pause so hostages can be freed. But I just want to reread that because it's just crazy to me that we're talking about Israeli forces are trying to push into Gaza's largest refugee camp. Mm. <laughs> is this a... Is this a, is, I'm sorry, is this a military target? Why are we going into a refugee camp? Yeah. just It's just one of these things, man, where uh, the brutality of this conflict is going to be seen more and more every day. Yeah. And the ground invasion is going to cause so much more bloody conflict than any of these airstrikes could if, you know, they start going into a refugee camp. So, <coughs> oh, <coughs> yeah, I, f I feel that. Um. That was my body reacting. Yeah, exactly. So U.S. mediators are apparently close to getting a deal between Israel and Hamas to free dozens of women and children who are currently held hostage in Gaza. And in exchange, they have agreed to possibly do a five-day pause in the fighting so that the United States and international communities can get emergency uh, aid shipments into Gaza for their civilians, um, which is a really good step. Yeah. I'm very happy with the Biden administration pushing for this. The hostages have to come home. The Gazan people need more humanitarian aid because mm -hmm. they're suffering needlessly at the hands of an Israeli offensive yeah. that is far too uh, indiscriminate um, in its operation. Um, yes. You know, I, listen, I'm not a military expert. I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, I could plan a better attack that kills less civilians, but there's got to be a better and different way here. Mm. You know? Yeah. There's got to be. Definitely. I refuse to think that it's necessary to push and destroy a refugee camp. I just don't think, I yeah. don't know. Um, and this is important for Biden to do, not just to save the refugees and not uh, not just to help the Gazan civilians and the hostages, but it's also important for Biden to react to U.S. public opinion as the president should. So uh, when we look at approval of Biden hitting on this issue specifically, 53% um, of people 65 or older approve of Joe Biden's handling of the crisis. Now, that's interesting. Joe Biden is not... Joe Biden has been doing better with the elderly than with the young people for a little while now in these polls. We've talked about issues with the polls. We talked about... We can even talk about the small samples of the specific cross tabs when we look at these mm -hmm. specific areas here. But doing 53% approval of 65% or older is okay... But then when you go down to 18 to 34 years old, only 20% approve how he's handling the conflict and 70% disapprove. Yeah. Um, our generation is pro-Palestinian independence. Yeah. We want the Palestinian people to have their own state separate from that, from the Israeli government. We do not want the Israeli government doing a military occupation of Gaza and the West Bank. We do not want Israel to keep expanding their settlements into the West Bank. We do not want Israel to bomb refugee camps. Mm -hmm. We do not want this. And we want Biden to do everything he can to stop it. And so it's very, very good to see that Biden is working for a pause. But while he says he's working for a five-day pause, he also goes out and says that a ceasefire isn't possible and a ceasefire isn't a true solution to everything. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to see where he actually stands, but a five-day pause is on the right track. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it makes sense. He's still extremely committed to Israel. Committed. Right? And so he can't take so many steps away from that mm -hmm. that he stops appearing that way. Um, so I do feel like he's trying to thread this needle the best that he can. We all want him to do better, obviously. Obviously. That's what this poll says. That's what we're saying. Um, but he... I don't know. I think he, he does... He feels more dedicated to them he feels like he needs to be more dedicated to them yeah and i also i don't think israel has any appetite for a ceasefire no and if biden comes out really pressuring uh netanyahu for a ceasefire it might totally wreck the israeli american relationship in a lot of ways yeah and that plays really bad for biden too so he's again he's just trying to toe that middle ground man where he's just trying to be like okay look we can't get a total ceasefire, but we can get five days in. We can try to take care of all the civilians. We can try to is, it f force Israel to fight a better war. Yeah. You know, but... Well, and I do think there there is an element here that I want to voice that 
getting rid of Hamas would be a good thing. Oh, yeah. And right. And that is Israel's stated goal. So that I think is also a big part of where Biden's coming from. He's like, no, I think this initiative to root out Hamas and get rid of them as the governors of Gaza is righteous. Mm -hmm. Like that is that is good. It is not. So we don't want a ceasefire because we want that thing to happen. Now, of course, there are a ton of questions right now. Of what does it look like on the other side? Or what does it look like to eliminate Hamas, right? What does it mean to root them out? How do you do that? Yes. Well, the, the process is one thing. Um, and I think Biden probably, I think the administration is pushing, like, let's not kill all those civilians. Let's right. not invade a refugee camp. Um, the question is whether something better than Hamas would be there to take its place. And mm -hmm. I think it probably would. I think it would too. Yeah. I think it's definitely feasible. You know, we can see the PLO become an okay partner to Israel. Mm -hmm. I mean, the PLO has been okay with reinstating the 1967 borders, but not technically the 1960 borders because they don't want the West Bank to be annexed by Jordan or anything like that, but they, they want the UN peace plan that would allow them their own state and stuff. Yeah. Um, Democrats in the House are actually mulling over, putting on restrictions to Israeli policy for in exchange for their military aid, which would be the first time that Israel Israeli aid is conditioned by anything. I think that's great. I think it's a, it's an amazing step in the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is now pushing. And some of these things are like stopping expansion of settlements, which yeah. is a really big, amazing step. If we yeah. can stop the expansion of settlements, that is one step closer to Palestinian liberation totally. um, and ending of the occupation. So, yeah. Yeah.